Hey everybody, Danny here at First Build. Uh, if you guys haven't watched Tony's video yet, go check it out. Really awesome, does a great unboxing video of our prototype. Um, and we're actually gonna be spending a little bit of time today going through it a little bit deeper, answering some of the questions, and hopefully clarifying a bit on what the unit does, doesn't do, and how it works. All right, let's jump in. It is a little controller that will monitor the level of CO2, I'm guessing, and also monitor the level of humidity and be able to operate this fan and monitor the humidity and fresh air level. Tony is absolutely right. The first prototype we used, we used an ultrasonic humidifier, uh, and we noticed that it got water everywhere. And then the water would evaporate and leave stains, and you'd get all these dissolved solids that we didn't really want, like a gross, fruiting chamber. We thought it should be clean, especially if you want to keep this on your countertop. We want it looking good. So we actually prototyped a new version of our humidification system that didn't rely on an ultrasonic humidifier. So the question is now, does it work, right? Does this humidification system give us enough humidity to properly fruit mushrooms? And Tony's hopefully going to help us answer that question. We are by no means mushroom experts, and we actually have very little experience growing mushrooms, so that's why we've got Tony to help us out. The um, filter that brings in fresh air. Um, again, fresh air is super important. Where's it gonna go? So I'm wondering if it will just leak out throughout the chamber, but it does have an intake, but it doesn't seem to have an exhaust. Tony brings up a good point here, actually. There is no outlet on the unit. Um, what we've done is we've designed the unit so that it's a little bit leaky, and we're relying on the positive pressure inside the chamber to basically leak the humid air slowly out of all of the openings. So we have some openings in the gasket on the door that you can see if you look at Tony's video very carefully. The gasket isn't one continuous gasket, it's actually chopped up in to four pieces. So it's always going to be a balance between how humid of an environment can we maintain and how much fresh air can we keep. But in order to not go through so much water and continually have to refill this, we have to be pretty careful about how often we turn on the fans and how much water we continually evaporate. So I just realized in order to actually be able to connect this thing to the internet and be able to control things like lighting and humidity, I actually have to connect it with an ethernet cable to a router. A lot of people had been mentioning how they thought it was really dumb that we have to plug the prototype into a router directly. We weren't super comfortable having Tony store his Wi-Fi credentials on an unencrypted media. We figured the best way to get the unit out and to him while still being comfortable with how secure the unit is from a digital security standpoint was for him to just directly plug it in. For now, that was the fastest way to get it to him and get it functional, um, even if he has to keep it in his basement. Also measuring the temperature. Um, so I don't know why I have such huge swings in temperature. Maybe that has to do with the humidity as well. I don't know. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that. This is interesting. Tony seems to be taking a bit off guard on how much the temperature changes inside the unit. When you evaporate any liquid, and especially water, it cools quite a bit. Um, and it's actually what's causing the temperature changes. When you open the door and let all the humid air out, close it again, basically the air inside here is relatively dry and the, the water basin at the bottom can now freely evaporate a bunch of moisture to the air. Well, that ends up cooling the chamber, and you can see that when you're plotting the data. It drops a little bit when the door closes again because you're evaporating all this moisture, that cools it down. And then as the whole thing kind of comes up to humidity, it starts to warm up again. We're gonna keep in contact with Tony and make sure that we're including all of his positive feedback and suggestions and negative <laughs> into the next build. Um, but in the meantime, let's hop over to the YouTube comments and address what you guys have been asking. So Lucas Hen on YouTube says, it'd be really cool if you made an operating system that could be used on a cell phone so you can monitor your grow when you are away from home. Yeah, that's actually a great point. And there are ways we could do that. It takes a little bit of development and we're not quite there yet on this prototype, but definitely an awesome idea. Mike Justice on YouTube says, don't waste your money. Get a clear 64 quart tote and have it. This is a colossal waste of money. Thanks for the positive feedback, Mike. Just kidding. Mike isn't 100% wrong. You can grow mushrooms in a large tote but you're not gonna get any of the cool data feedback or automated features. You're gonna have to regularly kind of attend the tote, and also it's still gonna end up looking like a tote at the end of the day, which uh, you probably wouldn't keep on your countertop where you can watch and enjoy your mushrooms growing. Definitely not for everybody, definitely not for Mike, but I would say, Mike, don't worry about it. You don't have to buy it. Rachel says, very cool. I bet you can grow koji in there. Rachel, I was so happy with this comment. I had never even thought about growing koji in here. And that is such an awesome idea. For those of you that don't know, koji is like, you inoculate rice or barley or some kind of wheat with a, a spore, a koji spore, and you let it kind of colonize the grain. And then you can use that to make things like sake and soy sauce and miso, and it's like, really good culinary delicacy. Uh, Rachel, that's very cool. We might actually try growing koji in here to see what happens. I think that is an awesome suggestion. Thank you for that. Makeshift says, cool idea, but I feel like the fruiting chamber is one of the easier builds when you're setting up to grow mushrooms. I'd love to see a tabletop laminar flow hood that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Makeshift, I would like to see that too. 
Um, it actually is difficult to make inexpensive laminar flow hoods. Two reasons. One is the HEPA filters required to build those are just expensive, right? Alternatively, you need a blower that can actually push air through that filter and just those two things together, now the cost really adds up. We are gonna start ideating a little bit on how to use this unit to kind of accomplish some of those same features. Um, and we're still kind of working through those details. We'll get back to you. Guyo88 says, I really think it should have a temperature system, at least a heater to grow in the winter, and would also like it bigger because you can't grow much in there. Um, I think those are great suggestions. I think, I think the heater is a great idea, especially if you're growing something like pink oysters that are warmer weather mushrooms. You definitely want a heater in here to help bump up that temperature. And if you're doing something like blue oysters where it's gotta be a little cooler, um, you could always throw in ice in the tray or find other methods of cooling it. We're gonna keep an eye on the comments below. Make sure to ask any questions or respond to any of the questions we asked. Stay tuned for our next video where we're gonna dig into some of the feedback that Tony has given us and see how we can incorporate it in the next unit. And then further down the line, we'll have a new build that incorporates those changes and we'll be sending it out to somebody else again. Thanks for watching.